Sometimes the margin between safety and danger is only a split second. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of quick thinking and bravery in a crisis on Rescue 911. We begin the day after a severe storm swept through the desert community of Phoenix, Arizona. Most of the footage in this story was taped as the events unfolded on August 15th, 1990. In the Phoenix community, the rains will hit the mountainous areas quite heavily. As they do that, we, you can't ever predict how much water is going to be coming down. It doesn't rain a whole lot here. I mean, when it does rain, people don't realize how deep these washes are and how fast they're running. And this happens every year that somebody will try to drive through them and get stranded. There's a potential for being swept downstream the vehicle itself. And as the vehicle is swept downstream, there's a potential for it to fill up. They're trapped inside of it. Or there's always a potential for the vehicle to start rolling, turn upside down, and now they're really trapped inside of it. And potential for drowning always exists in a situation like that. That particular week, uh, it rained extremely hard. It put in a lot of water in a very short period of time. Around 11.30 a.m. on that Wednesday, a call came in reporting an emergency. Channel 3, water rescue assignment. Car in the wash at 35th Avenue and Pinnacle Peak Road. Special call for Battalion 3. A specially trained swift water rescue team and a police helicopter piloted by Phil Tilford immediately responded. These type of missions, they're totally different from our normal patrol. They get the adrenaline going. Captain paramedic Tim Gallagher headed up the special unit. For us as rescuers, it presents a real challenge because the infrequency of this type of situation, we don't get to practice it all the time to become very proficient at it. Well, as we arrived on the scene, I saw the vehicle out in the middle of the wash. We noticed that there were two occupants inside of the vehicle, and we knew that we had to move pretty quick before the car was swept downstream. When we continue, I felt a little more sense of urgency as we got in close to them and I was able to look into their eyes and I saw that they were absolutely terrified. On August 15, 1990, members of the Phoenix Fire Department's Swift Water Rescue Team were called to the scene of a flash flood where a truck was being washed away with an elderly couple trapped inside. flotation devices and their safety helmets. We began at that point in time to try to get safety lines to the vehicle to stabilize the situation as best we could. The first rope after it was thrown to the victims, they wrapped it around the steering column of the truck and it was secured off to one of the fire department vehicles. Uh, how about the stability of the truck? Well, I'd say the stability of the truck is a uh, real poor at this time. Uh, It was a consideration to go with the helicopter, but the pilot felt there would have been too much weight on the one side of the helicopter, and we could probably pull the helicopter into the water. Then it was to plan B, to actually go get in the water, attempt to go out and get them and pull them to safety. But with floodwaters rushing at 15 feet per second, the rescuers would be putting their own lives at risk. We had to get personal flotation devices on the victims before we do anything, I gotta have two PSDs over to the helicopter for Tim to lower down. We picked up the life preservers from arriving fire department units and went out over the water again. You have to talk to the pilot continually at this time. He, he has no idea where the skid is on the aircraft, what position the aircraft, the tail rotor. If you struck the car, there'd be a good chance that the ship's gonna go over on its side. And then it would be a catastrophe.
felt a little more sense of urgency as we got in close to them and I was able to look into their eyes. I saw that they were absolutely terrified. The fact that they were older caused me more concern and that it was going to be a difficult operation because we were going to have to do most of the work for them. Command to rescue sector. Alright, until we get this vehicle stabilized, we're going to attempt to stabilize both east side and west side. Until that is done, I don't want anybody making any more moves. We had one rope secured to the east bank. We needed to secure the other side to the west bank. We were flaking the rope out and realized that it was not long enough to reach to the other bank. So we've secured the second rope to the east bank as well. It wasn't optimal. We would have liked to have that rope off to the left side, but it, at that point it wasn't possible. The rope wasn't long enough. So we decided that we would attempt to do what's called a shallow water crossing, to go out and actually pull the victims out and bring them to shore. Okay, Tim, ladder 33 is going to go downstream to the south in case we need it for a secondary. I had one crew that was downstream with uh, ropes and throw bags so that if people started floating downstream, we could get to them. As I moved out into the water, I noticed a bunch of barbed wire directly downstream. And I thought to myself, if I let go, I'm going to end up in the middle of that barbed wire. As I moved to the vehicle, I realized the difficulty, not only the force of the water, it was also deeper than what I had anticipated. You can feel these boulders coming at you, and they hit your knees and legs. Underneath the water, all this debris coming by, and uh, just pounding your legs. When I got out to the victims, I was on the driver's side, which happened to be the man. I just felt that he was right there, so he came out first. Stand by. We've got one person out of the truck at this time. We're trying to get him on across. My worst fear was letting go of the victim. And every single step that I took was very critical in my balance. still trapped in the unstable truck, 62-year-old William Babella was pulled to safety. I was scared throughout the whole ordeal. What I was thinking was, don't let go of the rope, because I'm going to do everything they tell me to do to hang on to get the heck over to the safe side. It was a big sigh of relief. We've at least got one of them out. Now let's see if we can go get the other one. I was more worried about the wife than myself because she can't swim. She was almost catatonic in fear. It was somewhat difficult to communicate with her because she was terrified. I believe she was so afraid that she was doing exactly step by step what I had told her to do. And I had even told her to walk on my feet.
Nearly 90 minutes after they tried to drive across a flooded road, Marie Babella was finally out of danger. When I got to the shore there, it was hard breathing because holding on that rope and fighting the water, but I was, I was happy and it was over and I was saved. And so thankful that they were there. I felt it was all over after I seen my wife coming in the truck. Up until that time, it was, everything was a blank to me. We got out very, very lucky. Uh, no bruises, no broken bones, no uh, trip to the hospital. There's nothing that you need to do that is so imperative that you have to get to the other side of an unknown situation that quickly. Things can wait. I will never attempt it again. It's just too dangerous. I can't even remember how we got in there so quick. But we did.